Gonna try something a little different today. So for the last few Oops All Kills episodes, I wound up covering movies that I was so invested in the story of that I wound up putting in a lot more than just the kills. So here's what I'm gonna do. This episode, I'm just talking about the top 10 most badass horror movie kills of all time. And note that this is definitely, this video right here, definitely the most scientific, definitive list encompassing every horror movie ever made from the dawn of time. It's definitely not just me, you know, talking about the first 10 really cool horror movies that came to my mind, you know. Definitely not that. So, you know, if this list is not to your liking, be sure to voice your outrage in the comments and to share it on social media and tell everybody how mad my list made you. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into these kills. Sleepaway Camp is, in my opinion, one of the very best 80s slasher movies, largely due to its unique inventive kills and its infamous plot twist. My favorite one, though, is technically not a kill, but I'll allow it since I'm making the rules here. What's the worst kind of person that could work at a children's summer camp? Look at all that young, fresh chicken. Meet the chef, Artie. Yeah, a guy who would refer to kids at his camp as fresh young chicken. A diddler. But make no mistake, he gets his. Artie's hard at work boiling a big pot of corn. That's a lot of salt. You're gonna have a summer camp full of kids with gout. All of a sudden, someone's creeping up on him. Look at those butchies. Feels like wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Stupid sexy Artie. He starts losing his balance, and the mysterious killer pulls the chair out from under him, making him fall with the big boiling vet melting his face into something reminiscent of Cobra Commander in G.I. Joe the movie. I was once a man. It's not clear whether or not he survives, but if he did, he'd probably rather be better off dead. Remakes rarely meet the bar set by the predecessor, but I feel that the remake of Wes Craven's infamous revenge film, Last House on the Left, hit the mark. And in this remake, John Collingwood gets to enact a whole level of revenge on the man who raped and murdered his daughter. Krug awakens, staring John in the face, and he realizes he can't move. Since he had no rope or duct tape, John Collingwood subdued Krug instead by severing his spine. He then rolls out a microwave which has its door broken and it gingerly inserts Krug's head inside of it. And... The idea that someone can't eat because they're looking at something gross is something that's always been kind of foreign to me. I mean, I can just watch anything and eat whatever. With one exception. That being this scene in Nightmare on Elm Street 5. It's a fancy dinner banquet put on by America's top chef. One Frederick Krueger, the main course, a doll, and is full of real guts. Greta's been watching her girlish figure, but you know, she gets logged into her seat and Freddy force feeds her. At the time I was watching it, a lot of the guts and mush in the scene reminded me of this Chef Boyardee meatballs that I just happened to be eating at the time I saw it the first time. I could not finish those meatballs and I could not eat them at all for very long. But Greta had no choice in the matter and not having the constitution of a damn to hell Homer Simpson, she dies of getting overstuffed and in the real world seemingly just suffocating to death. And like many scenes in the film, this one was actually way more graphic in the original version and they had to edit it down to get an R rating. This video is sponsored by Shudder. If you're watching this video, I assume you like horror movies, and Shudder is basically the Netflix of horror. In fact, a lot of the movies I talk about in this video can be watched on Shudder. And after my video on Lucio Fulci's The Beyond, I decided to see which Italian horror movies Joe Bob Briggs watched in The Last Drive-In. And I wound up watching his take on House by the Cemetery along with Eli Roth. It was a really fun episode. Shudder just got finished celebrating halfway to Halloween, with its biggest month of programming ever, including a brand new season of Shudder original series Creep Show, the return of The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs, the third entry to the Train to Busan trilogy, Train to Busan Presents Peninsula, and much more. And if you want to go deeper, Shudder has a massive selection of horror movies from around the world, from classics to modern favorites with a huge range of subgenres. Get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles like Color Out of Space, Host, The Mortuary Collections, plus 
all the best horror documentaries and the hit Creepshow TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. To try Shudder for free for 30 days, just go to Shudder.com and use code WANG. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com. You might be surprised to find out that the very first 3D movie I ever saw in theaters was actually Piranha 3D. The French New Wave of Horror director Alexandre Adja's remake of Joe Dante's classic Piranha. It was a surprisingly fun movie with a lot of wacky kills like the severed dick that gets eaten by a fish that swims towards the camera in glorious 3D. But the one that stuck with me the most happens during a scene where people are panicking to get away from the killer fish. A guy is making his getaway on a boat, and all of a sudden the engine stops. It appears that a woman's hair has been caught in the propeller. This is an emergency though, so he struggles to get that boat going again, and when he does, it rips her whole fucking face off in the process. At least I guess that's less embarrassing than getting scalped while eating corn on the cob. When Hatchet came out in 2006, I was taken aback by how much I enjoyed it. I was expecting some overly self-aware horror movie pastiche like a lot of horror movies that dive into bygone formats in that period of time, but what I found was a surprisingly good slasher movie that would have been perfectly at home in the golden age of the 80s, complete with some really inventive kills. My favorite of which being this one that shows off the killer, Victor Crowley's immense strength. It starts off where Jim is gradually chopped in half by a hatchet, but the real piece de resistance is his wife Shannon's death. Victor reaches his hands into her mouth and rips her head in half at the jaw, permanently imbuing her with the soy face to end all soy faces. He just made that bitch Canadian. Wang, thank you so much for having me. Much appreciated. For those of you who do not know who I am, I am Chef Brian Sao, not your typical chef. And my pick for awesome horror movie kill comes from Jason X. Specifically, the scene where Jason, after being frozen for hundreds of years, is magically resurrected by the moans of premarital sex. Of course, there's going to be a cute blonde in the scene that's going to be his first victim. There's a bit of a struggle, and this girl's banging on the glass to the next room trying to get help, but we all know that bitch is as good as dead. Jason grabs this girl's head, dunks it into a sink full of liquid nitrogen because apparently that's what you do in the future, freezes her head like the T-1000 and smashes it on a countertop to shatter like a fucking snow cone. Then on top of that, he just freaking chucks her. It was epic, memorable, quite shocking, and exactly what I wanted from a campy ass horror movie that looked like it was made for TV. Minus the nudity, minus the bloody gore, minus the cursing, but you kind of get what I mean, right? I did not like the Silent Hill movie. A lot of people hold it up as the best movie based on a game, but even by that standard, I just found it boring. That being said though, aesthetically, I have to say it did a great job of recreating and even in some ways enhancing the visuals of the games. And there's one key moment in the movie that features Pyramid Head that outshines the entire rest of the movie. If, if you've seen this movie, you know exactly where I'm going with this. I'm talking about the scene where Pyramid Head gets a hold of the coldest Anna and in one fluid motion, rips all of her skin off at once. Perhaps some kind of metaphor for circumcision. I'm a big fan of the original Day of the Dead, although I've had a lot of friends who hated it due to its introduction of intelligent zombies. Like Romero's of the Dead films before though, this one was really more about the interpersonal conflicts between the living characters, and in Day, there is none scummier than Captain Rhodes, who rules this underground base with an iron fist, and shuts down valuable research, eventually killing the scientist who is working on a project domesticating zombies. As Rhodes becomes more and more unhinged, zombies infest the complex, and he tries to make a break for it, only to be stopped by a vengeful Bub the Zombie who's angered that Rhodes killed his friend, Dr. Logan. So, Bub the Zombie shoots him with a gun, making him easy prey for a mob of his fellow zombies, who proceed to rip Rhodes in half for one of my favorite kills on both a character level and a special effects level. G.I. 
Giovanni Lombardo Radice is an Italian actor famous for having some of the wildest deaths in horror. In fact, I originally envisioned this particular video as a tribute to just his roles before expanding it out into other movies. But one of my favorites of all time was in City of the Living Dead, the first entry in Fulci's Gates of Hell series. In this one, he plays a vagrant named Bob, who winds up staying in a garage of a man named Ross. When Ross's daughter offers Bob a joint, Ross walks in and thinks Bob is trying to smash. Infuriated, he pimp slaps Bob across the mouth, conveniently knocking him into a drill lathe that then turns on. You see where this is going, right? But Fulci's drawn out style increases the intensity as you don't quite know when the drill is going to enter his skull, but it just keeps getting closer and closer, and then finally. Another one of Giovanni Lombardo Radice's most infamous deaths, this time in Cannibal Ferrix. The movie he cites as being the only movie he regrets doing, condemning it as being fascist, racist, and abusive towards animals. In City, Giovanni was a misunderstood victim, but in this one, he's a total fucking scumbag. And he gets his just desserts. Twice. The first time, the cannibals eat his cock. They tie him up cut it off and eat it while everyone else watches, but then they cauterize his wounds so he doesn't bleed to death, keeping him alive. At some point he escapes, and then I'm thinking to myself, you know, you got no dick anymore, why, why even fucking bother, what are you gonna do with your life? But in any case, the cannibals capture him again, and now they lock his head into some kind of weird table thing, chop his head off at just the top, and eat the brains right out of the top of his head like some kind of weird British soft boiled egg thing. So as I said at the beginning, these are totally the best ever and not just an arbitrary list I made of the first 10 kills that came to my mind. But should the mood strike me, maybe one day I'll change my mind and I'll have a brand new list of the 10 most badass kills ever of all time. And while you're here, let me know some of your favorites. Before you go, check this out. So, the past few months I've been working on a collaboration with the wrestler Alistair Black, who turned out to be a fan of the channel. We made a shirt design for his clothing brand, Black Mass, and it's available now. Just go to blxckmass.com. Anyway, if you like this video, you'll also like my video about the BME Pain Olympics. I'm out. <laughs>